this is pretty complicated uh, you know before I just put it in I mean I've got to figure uh, which way and how I'm gonna have this um, configured and such oh. let's just put my drinks on yeah, this is a uh, pretty pretty complicated um, that's that's just a teeny little bit there um, but it's just one little part I've got to focus on. But then I started realising when I got down to, you know, how to use the uh, the outputs, which is, you know, from the uh, on on uh, the onkyo. Let's gonna go in down here. I think I can get one in there because I'm to make a bit of a trade off other otherwise in the rack. Um, too much. Otherwise I can make a and a little additional in the rack because there will just be uh, enough for enough uh, for two more U frames uh, of equipment. And I figure I could put the other onkyo in the uh, in the rack in the kitchen. I have to shift some of the uh, the equipment up in the rack. <sighs> yeah, it's not just it's not just the. Um, you know what I mean, okay, so I have to shift some of the equipment up in the rack because uh, these are about seven inches high. About seven inches. That's with the feet. That's with removing the feet. So, that give me about seven inches. Um whether to use or not um, some of the internal amplifiers in it uh, can, could do that but then uh, um, gets a little bit tricky then <clears throat> because uh, if I wanted to do something additional which I could do here because if the, the, uh, the, these would be the, that's the sides around left right and then left right backs around and these are going to but it's kind of a little bit in question at the moment because I, I know how the vectoring steering usually works and uh, you know it's a sort of like got to experiment yeah with oh, dozens of movies uh, to see um, which which uh, method works better to um okay <laughs> give it a a wow factor uh, so i know that these are left and right right so i could put an additional matrix decoder on these and i can turn that into a say so to speak an lcr for whether it be used for uh, along the floor or the sidewall uh, somewhere so I'm going to have to figure out how to put another set of JBL in uh, it's not possible down it's not possible here um, could be doable maybe maybe about here but that means uh, I've got to put this equipment, uh, these players in the rack in the kitchen. I've got to put them in the other rack, and then run the infra, run the IR emitters uh, to them. Um, that means additional. Uh, I've got to change the HDMI cabling. Oh, flipping heck! Um, any optical leads? If I've got any whatever uh and some rca phoners of course so systems all backward compatible so whether it be uh if i want to run through proper dolby stereo 424 matrix from a player specific uh not all the players but just a specific a player a couple of them and uh yeah it's just it's very complicated that does but then it would make it doable then I could put a, another JBL just park it on there 
park it on the rack and then bring another one along here up there round and same for the back uh, on the side well not the back but same down on the side wall and then we do the back ball the same way and then do the well do along this side that's, um but that's just a that's just a guessing at the moment so I could wire in if I want to an additional matrix decoder. Um, <laughs> look at that! That's a lot. Of, that's a heck of a. That's a heck of a setup. So I get yeah, but then I can cut away from that. I can cut corners on that and just not bother with it. But I could. Could uh, fit uh, another one of these in. Um, uh, yes, SDU4. Very slim. And, you know, left right outputs from that will go into one of these. And then the outputs go to the accordion amplifier. And then the speakers, maybe on the floor down the side or and on the opposite side and then one speaker down in the middle um so i'll have sort of several rays i know it just depends on how the vector and steering on the matrix goes Match. Uh, it's a little bit, little bit more than this. It's a little bit more than that. Um, seating. Signals are panning around the room, the speaker to speaker. Basically, the sound is kind of um, sound. Basically, is kind of going sort of um, mm, the levels are kind of going up. And then fading down, or fading away in a mix, and then just levels coming over to another speaker, and then rising, rising upwards, in in you know, and then fading down, and you know they don't really move, you know, speaker to speaker to speaker to speaker, they do now, pan through, pan through, pan. Pan through, they just go yeah, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> um, oh, What's the bear up to? No good, no doubt. And and also, there's a uh, half half cent of phantom signals that I go, you know, you know, if I want to do, um, but I don't want to do it, but I could, but I don't want to, but I do, I'm thinking about it, you know, put another signal in between here. Um, down, down in between, which is another matrix decoder, just a simple, just a simple PL, um, PL, PL, and then sort of like, um, you get a new uh, channel uh, developing, um, because uh, basically the right will go partly 
connects uh, the dec decoder in our bear. It's, it's simple. Yeah. So, got a decoder here. Decoder, a PL. Uh, and you have the right channel connecting into there. And then you have the, the right surround coming around, connecting in. And it looks for a signal phase um, and, and amplitude. Uh, you know, as long as you know it sees something similarly matched, uh, mirrored, kind of. Otherwise, the sound just float in phantom. It just floats. It hovers, but you're not really sure where. So you use the decoder to extract, as well as it um, also frees up, frees um, the right and the left that part of the surround. It just frees it up, and um, you know, well, the uh, the, the, the new sound or signal is going into another, ch into a you know, and it's active all the time. You know, it's not just as and when. It'd be active all the time, and we'll pan hopefully smoothly of course you've got to use the same speakers um, and it's not it's a little bit more than using the same speaker because even if you had the same speaker like that's a speaker and it's positioned there and you play pink noise and you just slide it along the wall and get someone to slide it along while listening to the tonal you know change in the sound and i suppose that's one way to um uh, um figuring out how to equalize it you know so you've got a microphone in a position you know so just move it along and, and just observe the frequency and what's trading off slightly and then have a equalize that slightly a little bit and then so forth and so forth and it's trial and error. In it, bear. No, he doesn't agree. So the other thing I'm thinking of is uh, the other modes on the um, the other modes, the stereo mode, multi stereo mode, and um, diverting uh, the signal. So it not just goes to the side surrounds uh, as long as uh, along with the. Um, you know the back surround or um, left half uh, and the right right and the and the right and the right and the right half so um So the sound's going the same, whether it be stereo, because it's multi-stereo mode, and because that signal would have to still go through and whatever through, so I can use um, this, which I wired in the other night, <coughs> and it's working very well to, um, you know, so if you've got one of these remixes where it's um, 5.1, and I know it's uh, 70. Oh. And I know it's 70 format 42. Um, and it's been in remixed. And it's been re remixed into... Well, 5-1 is neither here or there. 5-1's a bloody confusing, bloody thing, uh, bloody misleading, I think, for the home cinema. Um, or whatever else. I mean, um, it is essentially five full rain channels. And, you know, be it um, left, center, left, left, center, right, center, right, and mono surround, and... That would only be six channels. Uh, 
wouldn't it be? Yeah, that'd be six channels. <laughs> and then, um, you know, uh, yeah, anyway, that'd be, that's, that's format 40. That's 40 and I think 41. 40 and 41. It's, it's just getting very hard to decipher, isn't it? Um, it's even confusing me. Um, so essentially I can just convert now. I can convert the signal into mono, so... You know. Um... But um, it's getting the signal. I've got to do another sort of figure out the wiring, so I can send the signal also from the sides, which which I can do easily at the moment, and send the signal so it goes to the overheads. Send the signal round or out through, so it go go to the uh, over overhead surrounds. Um, so I can more or less play the abyss back in the same channel layout as what I heard at the Odeon screen one Cinerama screen or mimic uh, UCI Tower Park or add on an extension sort of thing uh, to take it a little bit a little bit beyond that um, other technique that was done years ago and then also have it so it's for the floor so send the signal also to the uh, the floor so you know if it's a mono surround the abyss is format 42 so those surrounds will be mono and it do sound a little bit weirdish on the DVD so now I can uh, just press that and sort it. <laughs> um, yeah, I might put the abyss on in a moment. And so I could use the speakers at the below on the floor. So uh, essentially I'd be in a kind of like, I suppose a bubble. Yeah, air bubble, acoustical air bubble, bull bullshit of sound <laughs> it's not really a bubble that's bullshit really when you say a bubble a bubble's uh like you know a piece of liquid and you uh, you blow bubbles and you, you form a bubble <laughs> um it's not a bubble it's just basically putting speakers in the ceiling or floor and that's it see the front the back side walls corners different angles because different pink noise when you play pink noise or you listen to or shifting sound around you listen to it but specifically with pink noise you can localize positioning when it's a sine wave tone oh it's not very easy to localize it's very confusing because you sometimes think the tone is in front of you when it's really generating from behind you and it seems like it's in front of you but it's it's just you know and then you start getting up and then walking around and then you notice oh yeah that that's just the nature of it but when you play pink noise it's kind of like yeah i can sense it back there but if you really deep focus listen you've got a really deep focus into that pink noise or I'll change the frequency on it on the rem and then listen 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 mm, yeah <laughs> Anyway, um, this 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 is just a, a small little trifle to what I'm doing. Uh, so this is not going to happen to this is not going to happen tomorrow, or probably the next day. It happened sometime this week, or never know. Suddenly, bam! That just ends up in there suddenly. Um, and then of course I've got to uh, put the other one in the rack and that's uh, going to be for the backs around. And I'll uh, have to, uh, the, 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 the leads are already for the, you know, left and right sent out to there. So i just got to make some, uh, you know, and then put an IR emitter and then use the Onkyo remote. And then I'll be able to go through the formats, modes, 
select uh, select uh, select or format nodes on it uh, to a specific movie that I'm going to be playing, and it it will be um, pretty wow actually. Yeah, kind of like that. Kind of like this. I think I could do my own my own cocktail version, but it's very complicated. <laughs> 